That is exactly what we needed. These lights are just too harsh. I want to start transferring some of the uh, lights in here over to warm LEDs. So bought this new strip to replace the harsh white LED that used to be under here. Now it'll have a warm LED. So at nighttime, when I don't want to use these super bright LEDs, I can just use this one and not have it be so harsh white, but still got to get it stuck up. So I'm going to do that real quick. Cut to time lapse. <laughs> we go we've got light strips installed all the way down back around and finally i have some warm leds in the van that i can use and they look so much better they look so much more homey just in this area with the warm lights I'll turn the main lights off look at that that is so much better for nighttime when i don't want these on i don't know if the camera's doing it any justice but it looks so much better so if you've been watching this channel for the past few weeks you would know that I have been building out a mini truck camper and you might be wondering why I'm back in my van again going on another trip before I finish that and wow when you turn on the uh main lights you can really see the difference in the lights under the cabinets they look really orange but basically I'm waiting for a few specialty parts for the mini truck in order to be able to build it I have to wait about a week and a half for those to get here and then I'm waiting for a few other things um because everything I have to order for the mini truck is very specific because I have to go lightweight with everything so I had to special order this Italian poplar white poplar plywood that's apparently 30 percent lighter than regular birch or any other type of plywood you can buy and it's going to take a little while to get here so i figured while i'm waiting for that the mini truck's whole exterior is finished and i got a tarp over it because uh i don't know if you guys can tell but while i was in here it started raining um to protect it and i figured when i go on a little winter road trip in the van while i wait for the stuff to get here so that's what we're doing but i gotta get this trash out of here and then there's a few other things i gotta get packed up before we can head out and of course the one day I plan to leave on my trip, it starts raining. I'm pretty sure this propane tank is almost empty, but I'm hoping I'll have at least enough to cook dinner tonight, wherever we end up. Go back in my propane safe box. And then the last big thing is my e-bike, which I finally got cleaned up and tuned, because I've been riding this thing basically around on flat tires and with no brakes since I bought it. Also, I got a new bag on the back so I can carry stuff. My bed is getting soaked. Really gotta get this thing in here. This thing just barely fits back there with all my other stuff. Going out in the winter, so I brought some firewood too, just in case. It gets somewhere, we're a little cold. This should be it. Parked on a hill. Got myself a new laundry bag. My old one was all tattered and worn up. So that's something I really needed. And then of course, since we're going on a uh, about two and a half week trip, Gotta bring the Xbox too. Oops. All right, so I ran inside, grabbed one final thing. My last little bit of chicken thigh I had left over because as you can see, my fridge is empty. So I think tonight I was looking through my pantry in the van and I have, I think just enough stuff to make a chicken corn bean stew tonight. So I'm gonna see if hopefully I can get away with that and not have to stop at the grocery store um, because I'd rather do that tomorrow. I think we should have enough stuff for it, but that is it. We are all packed up. Shirts, clothes, toiletries, cleaned out my closet. I have some new clothes. Got a bunch of hoodies because it's gonna be winter time. It's gotta stay warm. And then while I was parked here the other day, I actually got my spices organized. So over the years, I have collected a ton of spices. Finally got them organized up there. Gave them a space, took them out of the pantry, freed some space up. But I think with that, we are finally ready to hit the road. And it's really starting to rain now. I don't know if you guys can hear that. I almost forgot. One final thing I have in my pocket. Christmas gift my girlfriend got for me. Since I love eggs so much. And we will put him up right here next to the dog my mom bought me, which in case you're wondering, is an old stuffed animal I used to keep all the time when I was a kid. And my mom found the exact one online and got it for me as a present, so he's been sitting up there 
ever since. Now I got him and I got him. Ooh. So I've been getting a ton of people asking me since I started the mini truck build, if I'm selling this van, if I'm getting rid of it, what the plan is. And I guess I never really answered that clearly, but the answer is no, I'm not selling this van. I don't think I ever will sell this van. This van has taken me so many places and done more for me that I don't think I could ever come around to selling it. Maybe eventually renting it out, but definitely never selling it. I am excited to get back on the road again, do some winter camping. I always miss out on the winter camping. So I end up staying stationary somewhere warm, trying to avoid all the cold weather, but being out here for so long kind of makes me miss the cold and the uh, snow. So I think for this road trip, we're gonna be going out towards Arizona, up towards Utah, back out, and then down the coast of California. Over the next two and a half-ish weeks, going into the desert, up in the mountains, trying to find some cool new spots that I haven't seen before. But for today, we're not driving too far, just a few hours up into the mountains. And they're one of my favorite mountain towns, Julian, California. So I'm hopefully gonna be able to find a spot up there in the mountains, but before we get up there, I gotta make one or two stops. Yeah, oil change and then uh, new wipers as well. So we are making our way up the mountain and we're about 15 minutes away from where we're gonna be camping tonight at hopefully this uh, this nice viewpoint that I saw on the maps. But I don't know if we're gonna be able to see anything when we get up there because we're getting kind of close to the cloud line up here in the mountains, driving around with this storm that's coming through. I thought it was gonna break before we got up here and stop raining, it was at least supposed to. And as I'm driving up these mountain roads, I keep thinking to myself whether this mini truck that I'm building out is gonna be able to handle it. Up till now, the roads haven't been too steep, kind of gradual inclines, but the last three or four miles have been pretty steep, windy roads up to the top of this mountain. So as I'm driving around on this road trip, I'm gonna to try to get a feel for how steep these mountain roads are and if it's even possible to get the mini truck up these roads, because I'm not really worried about the mini truck making it up hills. It's just the sustained uphill of a mountain pass is something that I'm worried about, especially with the truck only probably being able to hit 20 miles an hour when going uphill, gets me a little worried. So I'm gonna do some research of the area and see what the flattest route through the mountains out of San Diego is. I guess worst case scenario, we'll have to tow it. All right, we've made it. And as you guys can see, we just maybe like four minutes ago passed through the cloud line. So not much of a view up here right now, but at least we'll have one in the morning. But one thing I get asked, all the time, and I've said this before in the channel, but I don't really talk about it too much, is using the bathroom in the van, especially when I'm in spots like this where I'm not really out in the wilderness, so I can't go out into nature and dig a hole, and there's also not like a porta potty or something up here where I could go. Row number one, I got this bad boy right here, my little portable toilet, and then I empty it whenever I can in a bathroom or in a porta potty or something. And then in the unfortunate circumstance where I have to go number two in a place like this, it just sucks and I gotta go find somewhere nearby in a gas station where I can go. And this toilet technically does flush, but at the end of the day, it's just a glorified bucket with a lid. And I'm looking at my weather app right now. It doesn't look like the rain's supposed to stop for at least another two hours. But yeah, you guys are just gonna have to imagine the view here. Off there be a whole valley and some mountains. Pretty much just at this viewpoint on top of the mountain is where we're gonna be staying tonight. I don't really feel like driving far today, only about two hours from where I started. Just get up here, get back into the swing of things of being back in the van. And yeah, it's pretty miserable and wet and cold out right now. Hopefully tomorrow we wake up to a nice view right there. It is definitely much colder up here though than it was when I left by about 20 degrees. It's not too cold. It's like 45 degrees Fahrenheit and I'll put whatever that is Celsius on the screen. And I think I should be good to hang out, at least for now, with the door open. Because the wind is blowing. Oh, you can kind of see the view now. You see the river. Either that's a river or a road, I, I don't really know. But, big valley views. But the wind is blowing this way. So all the, all the rain is kind of getting blown across. The only thing I need to install, you can tell by all the water dripping down, is a rain gutter up here, so that I can keep the door open and it doesn't drip all over my countertop like it currently is. I'm gonna try to enjoy what I can of the view tonight. While we make our makeshift stew chili stuff. 
Do my thing by it. Chicken is still very frozen. Hopefully that's thawed out enough in like 20, 30 minutes to be able to cook some dinner. So I guess we can close that for now, but I think this is the thing that's coolest about van life is not necessarily that I don't have to pay for lodging when I travel, which is always a bonus, but the fact that I don't have to plan it out, which I kind of like. I like the spontaneity of being able to kind of travel where I want to on a whim without having to book hotels and planes and all of this stuff that kind of locks you into a set plan. Every time I leave in the van, even this time, I don't really have a plan for where I want to go on a day-to-day -day basis, but I do have a overall goal for the route I want to take, but I can switch it up daily if I want to. Come here, go down to the valley, go back up into the mountains, and take kind of the long scenic route, and I don't have to worry about making it to any specific place at any certain time, so. I think that's the number one benefit of van life, is if that's your kind of travel and that's the kind of person you are, I truly can't imagine a, a better way to travel. And you get to see a bunch of stuff that you wouldn't necessarily see if you were taking a uh, pre-planned route. But I think after this winter, I might make some uh, upgrades to the van and make it a little cooler in here, maybe some external mods, because I've done absolutely nothing to the outside of the van. There's no lift, there's no suspension upgrades, there is no light bar, there's no anything other than the new tires. I've done nothing to the outside, so I want to get some, uh, maybe some external storage, a lift, and maybe some other external stuff, but I think I'll probably get around to that this summer after I build the truck and then do a trip in that. Also, the spot where I'm currently parked is only like 10 minutes outside of the, the town of Julian, which is like this really cool little mountain town that I love checking out, and I've driven through here a couple times, and I love going in there, so I think tomorrow we're going to head in there, check out the town and get some apple pie before we head back down into the desert on the other side of this mountain range, because that is what the town of Julian is known for, is our apple pies, but I keep getting slight bursts of thick clouds that roll in and then it thinning out and being able to see. I almost saw for a second there the mountain range on the other side of this valley, but probably won't fully clear out until tomorrow. But this chicken is actually thawing out a lot quicker than I thought. So hopefully we can start cooking dinner in the next five or 10 minutes because I'm starving. All right, chicken isn't fully thawed, but I'm overweighting because I'm hungry. And look at this, clouds have completely cleared. Even got a little bit of blue sky peeking through. Those clouds over there look so cool. Yeah, this is the view we're working with for the night. So this little stew, chili, whatever you want to call it that I'm about to make. No real recipe, it's just whatever I had in my pantry, which just so happens to be some corn, diced green chilies, diced tomatoes, and some black beans. And then I got my chicken. So let's throw that into a pot with some better than bouillon. Hopefully it tastes good. And we're gonna throw in some seasoning as well. But first things first, before I put my apron on, actually I'm gonna get my hoodie on because it is actually pretty cold out now. Also, in case you guys couldn't tell, I did get a haircut since my last video. My hair looks crazy right now, probably. Only got one mirror in the van, and it's this tiny thing, so I don't have a lot of uh, space to pretty myself up for these videos. But I bought myself a new beanie, because I knew I was gonna be going on a winter road trip, so wipe your apron, still putting in work. I might make this into a uh, design that you guys can buy, so let me know in the comments if you guys want a, uh, if you guys want a wipe here cooking apron where you can wipe your hands so you can save your pants. And I might make it a, uh, just a waste one, not one that goes over your, over your top like this, but slice up some half frozen chicken. And the chicken might take a little bit longer to cook because it's frozen, but cutting up frozen meat is so much easier than cutting up raw meat. I'm gonna cut it up a little bit smaller than I normally would because it's frozen. Beautiful. Also, this candle smells absolutely amazing. Might have to start lighting candles more often. I also am just kind of gambling that I have enough propane to last me through this meal. See my breath. It is getting kind of cold out. So I really don't know how much propane is left in this tank. So hopefully we can get lucky and I don't starve tonight. Let's see, what spices do we want to add to this? A little bit of onion powder, whatever I have left. Some cumin, definitely. Some garlic powder and then some paprika and oregano. I should probably do the trick along with some salt and pepper. Wow, this is a pretty spectacular view. More and more of the mountains are popping up as it's clearing up more and more. And these are my favorite kind of meals to cook in the van. One pot meals. Don't make much of a mess, and they're easy to cook. I am kind of on a slight slope though, so all my oil is kind of cooling down to one side of the pot. Now we'll just brown this chicken, and I'm gonna give it a little extra time because it was frozen. Get these spices in there. I don't like to measure anymore. I've kind of got a good gauge of how much spice you can add to something and how much spice you should from all the meals that I've cooked in the past. And the only thing you can really overdo at least from these spices, will be the salt. So that's the only thing I gotta really watch out for. All 
Now we'll just let that cook for like five-ish minutes and we can get all these cans open while we wait. It's looking good on propane though. At least we'll get our chicken cooked. Best Christmas present I got. My mom got that for me when I first moved into the van. Great for those like everyday use spices. All my other spices that I have up here are kind of more specialty. But those are like the garlic powders, the paprikas, the oreganos, all that stuff that I use almost every time I cook. All right, now that we've got our chicken, we can just add everything else. Add our beans, corn, green chilies, crushed tomatoes. And then finally, one cup of water and just about a tablespoon of this better than bouillon. Get that all mixed in there. And then we'll just let that simmer for right around 20-ish minutes. And while we're waiting for that, I'll take you guys outside now that the uh, rain has stopped. Look at that. It has really cleared up. There's some low-lying clouds in the valley over there that were above, and they look really cool with the sunlight coming through. This is kind of why I wanted to get back out and traveling again on the road instead of staying in one spot, because in the wintertime, it might be a little bit harder to access places, and it might not be as comfortable because it's a little bit colder and the weather's not as nice, but there's so many less people out that it's just so much more peaceful when you come out to spots because you're not trying to fight for campsites or get somewhere early so the campsite doesn't get taken. It's just a lot, uh, a lot less crowded, which is, which is really nice a lot of the times. Also, I do apologize, just not realizing I really need to clean my stovetop. So I promise before next video, I'll have that cleaned. Throw in a little bit of salt. It's a fresh black pepper on the top while it's simmering. And we'll give it a taste once it's done. If we need to add more, we can always add more. All right, it has been just about 20 minutes. It could probably cook a little longer, to be honest, but I want to be able to eat outside and enjoy this view before the sun fully sets, which technically it already has. Look at that. Delicious. Feels good to be back out here. It's also cool watching these clouds like roll over these hills right around me the mountains just barely hold the clouds back and then they seep through right through that valley you can see them kind of trickling through all the way down there it's pretty cool if you look right through this valley you might be able to see a couple lights on that dry lake bed or i guess it's not dry but that's the salton sea down there and i'm gonna be heading that way in the next few days anyways cheers Absolutely horrible night's sleep last night. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but it's super windy outside. That paired with sporadic rainstorms all throughout the night, where we go from pounding rain to completely silent, just kept waking me up. But I'm glad we were able to see at least some of the view yesterday because definitely can't see it now. It's probably even cloudier than it was last night. But the bad weather has made it so that not a lot of people have driven up here. So that's a bonus, but definitely not the best. Night sleep. One thing I really want in the van, pretty much the coldest place all the time, is the floors. Every time I get out of my bed in the morning when I'm in a cold spot, <laughs> my feet turn into icicles. And I used to have these like nice fuzzy socks that I used, but I lost them. I don't know where they went. So now, I've just got normal socks. Now, the first thing we gotta get done today, we have to head into the town of Julian so I can get supplies because I'm pretty much out of every single supply. I need toilet paper, I need trash bags, I need paper towels, I need all the basic commodities. I also need to find a spot to get some breakfast because I have no food. I always like to somewhat make my bed in the mornings because unlike a house, you can't hide a messy bedroom behind a closed door. And having a mostly made bed makes it look a lot cleaner in here. And to answer your question, no, I'm not changing my clothes from yesterday because I didn't do anything in them. I don't feel dirty, so I don't really feel the need to. Onward, into the mist. Spot right here. Yeah, this is it. Town of Julian. Very small town up here in the mountains, but I love it up here. Ideally, I think within the next 
few years, I want to have some land up in this area. One of the neatest things about this town is it's themed like an old western town for some reason. The old western style buildings. I don't know if that was for the tourism or what, but I kind of like it. Very good small town vibes here, but we're going up to this cafe to see if they have any seats. <laughs> Do you guys have any uh, tables for one? It's about like a 42 minute uh, wait. Okay, that's fine. There's so many things on this menu. And I hate when places don't have a small table when I come in as one person because then it's just me and a giant booth like this. <laughs> it just feels very awkward. I feel like I'm taking up so much space. Sadly, we missed breakfast because we had that 40 minute wait to get a table. So I asked them if they could just add an egg to the BLT, but they weren't able to. So I just got a standard BLT coffee. And then this is the home of the original Julian apple pie. So we're going to get one of those before we leave too. So this little town of Julian is so small, it's not even census designated on a map. It's barely even a dot on the map. Some would argue that they have the best apple pie in the entire country because back in the gold rush era, when this town was founded as a uh, gold mining town, that was kind of what supported this town and made them their money. And then like all other small mountain mining towns, when the gold rush ended, they were on the brink of collapse. They found new gold in their apples. So I think there's something special about the apples and this being like the perfect climate for them. I don't know, but this is an extremely delicious apple pie. Have a good one. Thank you, you too. It says your table's ready. Okay. It's really starting to rain outside. I'm going to run back to the van real quick and get my rain jacket. And then I head over to the uh, grocery store. Stack up on some supplies. Ready to go. So I don't think I'm going to do uh, my full grocery shopping here because it's not really like a full size. I mean, they got a lot of stuff in here for how small it is, but it's not really like a full size grocery store. Just get the essentials. So now that I'm stocked up on at least the basic provisions that I'll need for the next two or three days, I think I'm gonna head down south, or I guess west, or I guess east, into the Colorado desert of Southern California, over towards the Salton Sea, which is a very interesting area in America. So hopefully going through some cool areas in that vicinity will be in the itinerary for the next few days. And hopefully once I start driving more west, we get out of this miserable cold rain. But I think that's gonna be it for this video. I'm gonna spend the rest of the day kind of driving out in the desert, find some cool spots to camp and drying off a little bit hopefully. So as always, truly appreciate you guys watching. If you haven't already, think about clicking that subscribe button. It really does help out the channel and I will catch you guys in the desert next time. Bye.